Hi, my name is Corey, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Arduino along with an NRF2401 transceiver and an IR receiver to control something at a distance via a TV remote. The reason I'm doing this project is because I have a TV that's in one room and I have a computer that's in the other. Now I've run an HDMI cable and I use a wireless keyboard and mouse in order to control the computer and have it display on the TV, but I still can't turn the computer on from the living room. So I want to be able to use the TV remote to both turn on the TV and the computer. This is the schematic that I'm going to be using for the build. As you can see there is a transmitter and receiver side and both of them are using an Arduino Nano along with the NRF2401 transceiver breakout board. On the transmitter side there's also going to be an IR receiver that's used. I use the TS38B and on the receiver side there's going to be an NPN transistor that's used. This is the transmitter part of the circuit. Here is the NRF2401 and here is the IR receiver right here. And here's the Arduino Nano which is going to be powered via the USB and then this is going to take in the remote signal and then output an RF signal to the receiver. This is the receiver part of the circuit. As you can see I spliced into the computer so now this PNP transistor acts as a switch in parallel with the existing switch so you can use either one. Here is the NRF2401 and it is taking in the signals from the transmitter and feeding it to the Arduino and the Arduino is deciding when to let current flow through the PNP transistor depending on what signal it's getting from the NRF2401. There is a resistor right here that is a 15 ohm resistor going to the base of the PNP transistor just to restrict current flow. And then there's also a 10K pull down resistor on the receiving side of the computer signal. Before I start talking about the code, I want to talk a little bit about the Arduino Nanos that I bought. So the Arduino Nanos that I bought have a chip on the bottom that is CH341. Now, legitimate Arduino Nanos have a chip on the bottom that says LM341. So it took me a long time and a lot of frustration, but I figured out that the computer that you're trying to program the Arduino Nano with will not recognize this board, and you have to get special drivers for it. So the drivers that you need to get are for the CH341, if you have the same kind of nanos that I do. All right, so getting into the code. First, there is the transmit code, which I have included what pins of the NRF2401 need to go to what pins of the Arduino. They are listed in the comments here. Next, you need to include the IR remote library. This is going to handle everything coming into the IR receiver. SPI, that is just the communication type between the NRF2401 and the Arduino. And then you need to include these two libraries as well for the NRF2401 to make it easier. The next thing you need to do is find out what hex code a button on your remote is giving the IR receiver when you press that button. So in my case, I use the info button on my TV remote. The way you can do this is after you have in, uh, downloaded and included the IR remote library, you can go to File, Examples, and then you can go to IR remote, and you can go to IR test. Now this IR test should give you all the tools you need to make a test program where you set up your Arduino with an IR receiver and then you can press a button on your remote and it will tell you what the hex code is. So I've done that and my hex code is this right here and it is defined for on signal. Next thing you need is a message. This is for the RF. So this message is what you're going to transmit to the receiver. <clears throat> then you need to define a pipeline, which this is just generic in the examples for the uh, NRF2401 library. You need to define what pins the radio is going to be on, which I define 9 and 10. This is also standard for the library. You need to uh, define what pin is going to receive the IR input, IR receiver. And then you need this just for the RF library. For the setup, first I started the baud rate at 9600. Then I started both the RF and the IR libraries to start looking for inputs on the pins that were previously defined. Finally, for the radio, you need to put in this command right here. And that piece of code just says for what you defined as your pipeline, it's going to start writing to that pipeline. In the loop, first there's an if statement that takes in the results from the IR receiver 
and decodes them into hex and then prints them on the serial monitor. After this, there is an if statement that looks at the incoming results from the IR receiver and compares them to the previously defined hex value that we put in for the info button. If they're the same, then it goes ahead and say, tells the NRF2401 to write a special message and transmit it via RF. So now we come over to the receiver, and the receiver is basically has a very similar setup, except we are now going to define an output pin. So this is the NPN controller, which we're actually using a PNP right now. So I'll change that right now. And while we're here, an NPN transistor would actually be better because for a PNP, you always have to write it high and then only write it low when you actually want the computer to turn on. This isn't ideal. Typically, you would want to write the transistor low and then write it high for a few seconds whenever you want it to come on. So either way, we have a PNP. That's what I'm using right now. So right now in the loop, there is an if statement that is looking for any incoming RF signals and this is all this code right here. If it sees this message that is coming from the transmitter, then it's going to digital write the PNP transistor low for 500 milliseconds, and then it's going to write the PNP transistor high again. So whenever it's high, that means that there is no current flowing between the computers on signal and on receiver. When it is low, the PMP transistor is going to allow current to flow, aka telling the computer to turn on. If there is nothing received, then the pro uh, code is just going to keep writing the PNP transistor high, aka not letting current flow. All right, so here is an example of it working. Here is the remote. I'm pressing the desired button, and the computer turns on. You can see the blue light of the computer that came on and you can hear it starting to go. There we go. Thank you for watching my video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I hope that this helped.